Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to Enigmatica 6 Expert. So today is an exciting day. We have our gates knocked out that I want to get done. And we are primed and in position to begin basically expanding out our build, which ignore this for right now. Uh, we are about to start moving into sort of the build as a whole instead of just living and working within the... Uh, the agriculture area. If we pop out, uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of building. This is just kind of a preliminary recording as I'm working, uh, just so you guys can kind of see a little bit as we as we begin working on this. But basically, this end is going to be the agriculture area. There's going to be a royal quarter that kind of goes up here. We'll have some manual magic crafting. A lot of this over here is really going to be manual stuff, early stuff, and then later on, you know, we'll automate a lot of this through sylphs and stuff. Uh, which we are progressively getting closer and closer to. Probably have some kind of a big tower up over here. We're going to have the mining area over here. Uh, down through here, there's going to be a couple little setups, but for the most part, it's going to be a road and a lot of just kind of like clutter buildings, like really, really cheap buildings that we can throw together to make it feel more like a city. And then it's going to come through to kind of our great pyramid and maybe some additional pyramids back behind it. And that is what we're going to start working on today. This is where really the bulk of our happening is going to be uh, for the pack. And you can see I've started kind of plotting this out. This is going to be a very one-by-one one angle uh, kind of pyramid. Because I think it's going to work best for us. Now, it's not going to just jut up like this. Uh, but for the main entrances, they're going to be at about this layer. And then for the corners and things like that and the rest of it that's not part of the main entrance, it's going to go ahead and come all the way down. But this this is actually 83 by 83 uh, for the base of this. And it's not going to be like a traditional pyramid where it just goes straight up and there's nothing. Uh, we're going to have sections that kind of open up um, from, you know, from the inside uh, so that we can step out. Maybe some little gardens. Uh, I haven't brought it all the way up because I think we're going to leave the very, very top of this open so we kind of have like... Uh, sort of an area that kind of runs all the way down uh, where you can kind of look down and see all the way down through the pyramid and then we'll have like moonlight sunlight that kind of comes down through the very center of this and this this and any additional pyramids that we build uh, is going to be kind of the site of a lot of our automation so we're going to have it somewhat centralized uh, over here and then the rest of it is mostly just going to be decorative uh, type structures that run through and then kind of our manual sort of our starting base and manual uh, stuff over in here uh, and then we'll spruce up the mines lightly you know uh, nothing too crazy but I'm actually disassembling the pyramids some of the pyramids that we conquered I'm disassembling those for limestone bricks uh, originally I was going to build it out of sandstone but I think we're going to go with limestone and then once we get to the point where we need more we'll just set up a uh, a limestone cobble gin, just like we did with the sandstone and stuff. Set up a limestone cobble gin and have that running as well. Okay, I've been working on it for a bit. I did add Farsight uh, to my client side stuff just so that we have a bit better view distance, especially since we're planning on uh, kind of upgrading the size of the base and bringing things out. Uh, I figured it was time for a little bit of Farsight because before that, you know, it wouldn't help us that much when we're exploring, but. Uh, now I think we need it for our base. I did go ahead and I ran uh, this road through. I mean, we'll have some additional roads, of course, but I did run this road through. And if we pop over, you can see that uh, I got all the blocks placed out for the outside. And I've started kind of plotting out how we're going to do this like main entrance. Um, but, you know, it's still got a bit. And like I said, we're going to have some stuff come off the side of it. And we need pathways that lead up uh, up the side of it and stuff. But if we step inside, uh, you can see we have a nice big space here. I did make four, yeah, four uh, mega torches. And that's because a single one in the middle, it wouldn't cover it. Even these being on each of the four corners, uh, there is occasionally some mobs that uh, spawn right along the edge and kind of walk in at the moment. And then over here in the middle, we have um, sort of this structure here that I kind of filled in with cobblestone uh, and then just plotted out. It's 10 blocks out from the center for the cobblestone, and then there's a couple extra blocks uh, here as well. So uh, just kind of plotting some things out 
Uh, and then also the, the front side here, it's not going to stay like super flat like this. Honestly, what I'm probably going to have it do is come down a bit further and come down low. Uh, and then this will continue up and then you'll walk up stairs, uh, kind of leading up to the main entrance for the pyramid. So, but you can see that I have been working on the inside a bit, uh, just kind of laying out rooms. Uh, and if we head inside, it actually looks kind of cool on the map, um, uh, and this gives you a good like aerial view of the way that the bottom floor rooms are laid out. Now we may still have some basement areas underneath, uh, but this is the layout for uh, this bottom floor here. If we pop up, you can see uh, it's actually kind of mirrored all the way around. There is some slight variation on the front because I wanted kind of this big opening that comes through and doesn't break away until uh, back here. So you won't be able to access these rooms from here, whereas over here, uh, these rooms access here, but don't access past that, you know. Um, so we've kind of got this, basically this big series of interconnected rooms that we can set up stuff in, you know. And I went with basalt for the flooring um, because I was reading and pyramids were generally uh, basalt floors and they would do uh, primarily limestone, but we're going to go with a little bit of sandstone um, and red sandstone and stuff, make it a little bit you know, a little bit of variation, a little bit ornate. Um, and then they would use pink granite. So uh, we do have this ivory travertine down through here, though these stairs may end up changing um, to basalt and then have the ivory travertine kind of wrap up. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I haven't fully decided on that, so I'm just leaving that alone for right now. But this little middle section, this is actually, a lot of this is going to stay open uh, to the skylight above, um, and you'll be able to kind of look up and see the sides of the floors as they go up and then that natural light will be just kind of shining down right through there uh, i did go ahead and just threw down some torches just to light it up mostly um, there's not really much in the way of mob spawning now that i've got the sides for the most part filled in i've come out two blocks from it uh, at the moment now at this point uh, i am going to be doing just a little bit of setup and i'm going to bring some of the walls up and stuff like that and we're going to start uh, we're going to go ahead and start making uh, some drawers now we do have frame drawers i'm gonna have to figure out a design for our drawers and this is actually extremely easy for us is it um two by twos or okay it's basically baskets instead of chests for all the drawers uh that is going to take a bit of canvas but luckily uh canvas is really easy to make and we're actually going to have something set up here pretty soon for automatic canvas we have a literal ton of canvas and we're actually going to be getting all this sorted today. It's really exciting. And we have a lot of like straw bales and stuff. Uh, if we need to kind of break into those. But uh, we have, what, 5, 8, 11 stacks of canvas here. Uh, so that's going to put a pretty good dent in it if it's not enough. You know. Uh, but probably, probably going to be enough. <laughs> I imagine, but we'll see. Yeah, because it's only three canvas per basket. So uh, we're going to be able to make a bunch for sure. Um, and I'm going to figure out a design for it. I'm not going to be covering how to set up drawers because I think everybody probably knows that by now. Uh, but I'm going to run some drawers and I'm going to go ahead and future proof it with trim. Uh, we can't at present, we cannot make the drawer controller just yet. And uh, just in case you're not familiar with the way that the frame drawers work, I know I've had some questions about it in the past um, because, of course, they did change it. Uh, you know, there's not the, the framing table anymore. It's not part of the default drawers mod since as of like 1.16 or 1.12, I think it is. No, 1.6. Yeah, 1.16. Uh, but what we can do is we can place in, I think it goes in the middle. Uh, if we wanted to wrap it completely in soul sand, we can do that, we can put that on the front, uh, and this is gonna do the border there. So you just lay it out on the crafting grid. Anything else is gonna make the recipe invalid, but you can use these three slots here uh, to change to change the layout of it. So basically they just completely took out the, uh, you know, the framing table, so. But, all right, I'm going to figure out a design that I like for our frame drawers, and I'll be back once I get that sorted out. Uh, I have been working on this for a bit. Uh, what I'm going with, this is just sandstone. In this case, I'm using just the sandstone glyphs. You know, it really doesn't matter because I'm really just using it for the borders for the most part. I'm using that, and then I'm also using alabaster from Adam. 
for the drawers, and I've started kind of filling this out. I haven't moved everything yet, but I've gotten I've gotten a start on moving things over. So, uh, and just kind of plotting things out down through here, and then I've got to finish filling drawers in right here. And if we need more drawers than this, we'll add them. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge as we come to it. You know, uh, this will be a good starting point. And I did go ahead and I future proof this, so we do have. Uh, frame trim that just runs out there's frame trim there and this is frame trim uh, right here is frame trim and it comes underneath the drawers on this side uh, and then the frame trim goes through and back in behind these pillars uh, is frame trim right there and so on so everything should be linked up everything should be future proofed uh, and I check the spacing and everything should be good you know, it's about 12 blocks in every direction out from the drawer controller and uh, this room actually. Uh, we're going to set the drawer controller up here and then everything should line up nicely for us when that time comes. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting some automatic item uh, sorting and storage and all that stuff in place. Uh, we're going to start with the pretty pipe stuff because we're going to be using a combination of pretty pipes and corporea and then later on we'll add on to that and add on the addition of refined storage. I don't know if we'll really use occultism storage. You know, we used it on Spellbound. We might do a little bit with it. Uh, it does store a lot of items in a really dense space, so I may do some testing and see how well it interacts with corporea and refined storage, and then we might use it for storage, you know, um, but not as our centralized system. So, uh, but anyways, we are going to be making ourselves some pipes, and we're going to be making a bunch of these, and then we'll probably end up making more uh, after the fact, because we are going to be running a literal ton of pipes. So let's go ahead and just get a bunch of shafts. And actually, I need to make a key. So let's go ahead. We're going to make ourselves. There's a stack and 16 pipes. Uh, we might do some stuff with the pretty pipes crafting. Um, we've got a few different methods that we can go for crafting, so we'll see. But we're going to go ahead and we're just going to run pipes all along behind our drawers. Now, down the road, we'll be able to remove these uh, once we have the drawer controller. And it's going to cut down a lot on this type of stuff. But for right now, pretty pipes are going to be our option. And technically, Corporea could handle this, but it becomes very cumbersome, uh, especially without a drawer controller. Um, it, on, it just becomes so cumbersome to do it with Corporea. So we're going to be using pretty pipes for this. So we're going to run them all along. That took almost our entire set of pipes, which is great. And then we're also going to be running them back here as well. So I'm definitely going to have to make more pretty pipes. I'm going to have to make more andesite alloy as well. And I think another 20 tin plates should do it. Now let's go ahead and we're going to be making ourselves... Uh, a low extraction module. We're going to need the blank modules. And we're going to need a redstone servo. Uh, let's go ahead and just get four of them because we're going to be using them on and off for some things. And we're going to go ahead and get a low extraction module. Just one of them is fine. And uh, we'll wait on the retrieval. I don't actually need it for anything at the moment. And then it's Invar and then it's Electrum to upgrade. Now luckily we have Invar and we have Electrum. Okay, so let's go ahead. There's a bunch more pipes, and while we're at it, let's go ahead, upgrade this, and then we're going to upgrade it to the maximum tier, which is the high extraction module. And then we'll go ahead and run the rest of these. And we're going to bring our pipe system down. And it's going to come up right here. And then it's going to come up and plug into the bottom of that crystal chest. So we still got a half stack of pipes left over. That's good. Okay, now before I do anything else, I do need to go ahead and make the key. All right, so there's our upgrade templates. I'm going to go ahead and get all those because I'm probably going to have to make some drawer upgrades at some point. By the way, Tyler brought us over a load of heads. <laughs> as well as a few decorative blocks uh, like the banner here and the braziers that he picked up he found them in a uh, what was it i think it was a dungeon but he found a bunch of player heads so he brought us over a whole bunch for decorating so a big thank you to tyler for that i do really really appreciate it 
uh, there is our drawer key. And since we don't have the drawer controller, we're going to have to go through and just manually lock in all of our drawers. Because we want to manually control what goes into these. And of course, whenever I add additional drawers, I'll just have the key in my offhand. And that way we don't have to worry about placing down drawers unlocked. Okay, now at this point, what we can do, we can open up this pipe and we can just put in our high extraction module. Uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to filter it at all. It's just going to be extract everything. Uh, and that way I can throw in, for example, if I throw in glass, it doesn't go anywhere because glass can't be pulled out. But if I throw in, say, scented sticks, those are going to get pulled out. And we're actually going to see them if we look. We're going to see them kind of come up over on this side. It's not going to be super fast right now. But we're going to see that scented stick. There it goes. And it's going to get deposited into this drawer, which has our scented sticks in it. Uh, so that way we kind of have like a centralized input chest. Then later on we can we can switch this over to, say, an ender chest. And that way, um, you know, it can automatically grab uh, our stuff and just send it off wherever it needs to go. So, uh, And you'll notice that this doesn't go anywhere. I'm assuming that that means... Uh, no, it's not full up on frame cube. It might just be waiting a second until those other frame cubes. Or it might have been a visual thing. Sometimes it doesn't uh, update correctly visually but you can see all of our frame cubes came over here and we have 241 in there now now right now it's not a bad speed because it's moving a stack at a time but when we start trying to move a lot of items you know uh, that's going to slow us down when it's only extracting at that speed uh, but the nice thing is going with the high tier extraction modules it's going to prevent any oversending for us which is quite good uh, but let's go ahead let me just grab like a stack of sugar I'll be so glad to have all this stuff sorted out. That's why this is the very first thing that we're doing. We're just like, let's do storage and sorting. Because I've got chests and it takes me it takes me longer to find things a lot of times than to actually do things. Uh, but let's go ahead. Let's get ourselves... Um, yeah, we'll just go with two low speed uh, increase modules. And we're going to go ahead and bump these up. We're going to go ahead and bump these up to tier two. And then we're going to bump them up to tier threes. And then if we open this up, we're going to put high speed. Uh, you can only do one. Okay, I wasn't for sure about that. Uh, but now if we were to throw in this, you're going to see it shoots out. I don't even know if we'll make it over there, especially not getting caught on things. Yeah, I'm sure we didn't. We got uh, 17 scented sticks in there. Yeah, it shoots it out at a whole lot faster speed. And so it's going to get to where it's going. It's not really a big concern for like scented sticks, but for example, something that's way over here, it's going to take it a little bit for the pipe system to move it along to that point. So uh, it's going to be quite nice for us. And we will have some places where these items are visible, maybe moving through our base because I love seeing, uh, you know, actually items moving around physically, but uh, that should be good for us for right now. Now to make our pipe wrench... Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and with this, what we can do is, uh, is it offhand? Yeah, offhand. Um, let me actually pull up this block. We're not gonna need it here anyways. And then what we can do is we can put a cover on that so that way we don't see it, uh, the pipe running through there. That may be the cover I want to stick with. I don't know. I may end up changing it, but it's not a big deal if we uh, decide to do that. And then if we want to pull that off, sneak right click, and we can pull that off. So um, I'm actually going to leave it visible for right now until I decide for sure that that's the... I don't think that's the cover I want. I think I'd rather have uh, some sort of more of like a stone texture. Or not a stone texture, but like a like an altar type texture something that stands out and it's a little bit different uh, now let's go ahead and break off this hey golden swatter one hit kill silverfish and endermites oh and you will notice that i have died again i have seven deaths now uh that death was not my fault at all not even in the least well i guess it was because anytime you do anything with tyler he is liable to kill you and jomega was needing some help uh, with a pharaoh, and we came over there to kind of help out. It was me and Tyler, and I was standing behind the pharaoh, and Tyler was in front of it, shooting it, and he had a piercing 
uh, he had piercing arrows and I didn't realize it and he one shot me uh, with his bow so that is the method of my de my my most recent death so just a heads up uh, but let's go ahead let's run this over and plug that up all right now what we're going to do for that chest is we are going to have a low priority module okay so there is our low priority module and another thing I'd like to go ahead and get is a tag filter module. Uh, I'm going to need another servo. And we'll go ahead and get that. We're going to use that in just a moment. And we're going to be using a few of those over the coming episodes. But just one today. One, one today should be good for us. Now the nice thing about using crystal chests for your uh, kind of like your overstock or your overflow chests is the fact that you can see at a glance when items are inside of these. Uh, so we're going to put a low priority module into here and what that means is that whenever something gets deposited in the chest it's only going to go here whenever it can't go anywhere else I anywhere else on the entire pretty pipe network then it'll come to this chest and of course we do have lower and lowest priorities um, which of course are increasingly lower priorities uh, so if we want to do things as as lower priorities we can I mean realistically we could upgrade this to lowest priority not a bad idea but I don't have anything else that I'm running on low priorities so um, but later on we may end up you know we could instead of having void upgrades do trash cans and have those on low priority and the overstock on lowest priority and have those trash cans kind of filtered you know something like that it would come in it would come in very handy but uh, or if we have our items not in drawers necessarily you know uh, but we could get an additional storage upgrade in if we don't use void and instead we use trash can so that's an option but um, and then for the tag filter I'm actually gonna steal this for right now because really one overstock chest is fine for the time being and then let's go ahead and break out say this block right here uh, we're gonna go ahead and run some pipes up and put on a crystal chest here and we're going to put a tag filter modifier into this chest. And we'll get into kind of what that's going to be for uh, here shortly. But I'm going to go ahead and run the pipes over. And then we're going to set up the tag filter. And we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a low filter module. We just need a low one for this because we're only going to be filtering one tag, basically. And it is worth noting, if you're curious about tags, F3 and H is going to turn on advanced tooltips. And that way we can see, if we hold shift, we can see the tags. You can see this is... Uh, this enchanted book is supplementaries, placeable books, item, and item filters, check NBT item. Uh, we're actually going to be filtering on the supplementaries, placeable books item. And it looks like the, the standard book is in that classification. Uh, so what we can do for that, um, I'm going to have to craft just a little bit more stuff. My life's going to be so much easier when all my metal and stuff is over here. I'm going to be getting it, it's just I haven't yet. Because uh, it kind of ties into something that we're going to be doing next episode. And to do this, let's go ahead and pull out the low priority module. I didn't think I would do it this soon, but we're going to go ahead and do it, actually. Uh, lead and Invar. And we're going to go ahead and bump it to lowest priority. So let's go ahead and get lower and lowest on this. Because I want this to be lowest priority for this dump chest. And then once we plug up additional dump chests, those will be lowest priority as well. Uh, even though I don't think all of these are going to be dump chests through here. Because we shouldn't need that many dump chests. Or overstock chests. So. But then let's get ourselves a low priority module. And then at this point what we can do is we can do low priority. It, the order doesn't really matter. Uh, but we're going to do low priority, low filter, and tag filter. Uh, and that way this is going to be prioritized later than books. So, or the books in the storage drawers, so they'll go over to the storage drawers, and then um, overstock would come over here, you know, unless we had tons of storage, which we will. I don't have a ton of books, you know, I've got like 50 or something. Uh, now, for our filters, what we're going to do is we're going to add in, uh, just any kind of enchanted book into this, and we're going to say this is what's allowed. So, we're going to just click on that, and it's going to basically make it bold. And then if we were to pop over at this point and we threw in that, that's going to get pulled out and then we should see it. It's going to beat me. No, nope, it's not going to beat me. No, nope, there it is. Uh, our enchanted book goes into there. And this is just going to be like the basically the dump chest for the enchanted books. And then we can we can kind of manually go through those. 
Um, but if we throw all of that into there, and I also need to dump the gunpowder, that stuff's going to get pulled out, and you can see they are that our enchanted books are automatically getting dumped into the crystal chest at this point. Uh, and then everything else is getting sorted as per usual. So we'll be using the tag filters a lot um, over the coming episodes. We're going to be using a couple come next episode for uh, ore processing, for example. Uh, also armors, there's the, the damage filter, which is quite useful. And um, honestly, a whole lot of control here. There's stack limiters. Uh, which are super cheap so pipe pressurizer once we have a lot of power i guess but uh, honestly i think the speed of this should be sufficient for us okay so that's our pipe network that's all in place uh, and then what i can do is i can just toss in uh, you know all this variety of stuff that i'm not using right now i know a lot of this is going to be going to uh, overstock but that's okay uh, so if we take a look, all that stuff went into here because it's low priority and then everything that could go to the drawers went there uh, and whatnot. So, All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start our corporea system. The other, basically within this pack for item storage and stuff, you have corporea and pretty pipes, which are like your early game stuff. And then you have occultism and refined storage for your later game stuff. Occultism is not as powerful on its own, but of course you can couple that with nodes and stuff like that and uh, you have actually have a lot of options for kind of automation and item stuff, you know. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and grab our Corporea Sparks out of here at this point. And what we're going to do, we're going to go through and we're going to add these to the drawer. Just shift and right click. You can see one got consumed and technically there's a Corporea Spark attached to this drawer. And we're going to go through and just add it all the way down the line. Now, eventually, we can just plug this onto, say, a drawer network, and all will be right with the world, or a, a drawer controller. But at the moment, since we don't have one, we're going to be adding Corporea Sparks to all these different drawers. And luckily, we got a ton of these from Adam. So uh, I don't think we got quite enough, though. I think we're actually going to use all of these. And I don't even have all the drawers in, so there we go. Now, all of those have Corporea Sparks. And then we're going to set up a Corporea Index. This one's going to be setting right here. And we're going to, on top of that, we're going to put on a, uh, we'll just do a Master Corporea Spark onto that. Uh, and so what this is going to allow us to do, let's say we wanted Canvas. We could just type Canvas. And there we go. It requested a Canvas. Out of 512, we took one. And of course, we can throw that back in there and it'll get sent over. Uh, to where it needs to go and then if we wanted um there's a bunch of different stuff if you check the lexica botania it'll tell you all the different uh all the different stuff that you can type in so i'm not going to go over all of it there's certain ones i use and there's certain ones i don't it, and it's actually very very um friendly to shorthand so if we said we wanted well i don't have cobble stone in here that's normally my example say 32 cobble and it'll give you that but let's say uh we wanted 10 bones uh, we can do 10 bone, and it's going to give us 10 bones, or we can do 10 bones, and there we go, it gave us 10 bones. And then if we said we wanted a half stack canvas, it's going to request 32 canvas and toss it to us. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do. Um, we're not actually going to be using that request feature that much. Uh, now let's go ahead, and we're going to add a Corporea Spark to our overstock chest and the reason we're doing this is because if we accidentally especially once we have an ender chest if we accidentally throw in our sword or our book or something like that and it gets sent to the overstock we want to still have access to be able to pull that back out um, remotely so it's not as important right now but it will be fairly important later because i tend to throw things in places where they don't belong uh, now these corporeal sparks we can go ahead and throw them in and let them get sent over uh, to where they need to go because we're not going to need those right now. We got the basis of our corporeal system in place. So we can remotely request things. But in this pack, we can make it even better. We can make it excessively better. Uh, now, there is a lot of other corporeal based things, uh, which we're going to get into some of these a little bit later. Uh, but for right now, master corporeal and index is what we really need. But we have interactive corporea in this pack, which does make corporea, it kind of simplifies ordering things a lot, and it is excessively 
excessively powerful. It does require mana though, uh, so that is something that we're going to have to bear in mind. Now Mythical Clay is within our wheelhouse of things that we can do. Uh, this actually isn't that expensive, it's just we can't use tier 3 spells at the moment. And I do have enough Blitz Powder uh, at the moment. And there is our first Mythical Clay. Which looks like, uh, oh we need Archmage, yeah that'll be just a little bit. And then let's go ahead, let's make ourselves another Corporea Index. And let's go ahead and get our first Red String. There's two of those. And then we're going to need the four Corporea Blocks. And the Corporea Index. And there we go. There's our Corporea Requesting Halo. Now this is going to require mana. Um, and we're also going to have to link this. And there's upgrades that we can make, which we'll get into. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to right click, shift right click, shift right click right there. And you can see bound corporea index position. And it tells us where our corporea or what corporea system this is bound to, which is this one, you know. Uh, and of course, corporea nodes, they link. I don't have a wand of the forest, but they link. I think it's eight blocks away. Um, from each corp each uh, corporea node it's kind of like plugging up sparks basically so uh, but if we take this you can see we can right click now right now it's not really going to do much of anything because it does require that we have mana available to actually keep it open and then we're going to add some modules to it okay and we've been had but i wasn't thinking a lot of the runes they aren't that bad but actually to craft a mana tablet since we do need the rune of mana that is out of our reach at the moment. Uh, but something that we might try, because I can't really use this until I have mana, um, and I know that the mana band of mana does also require uh, a mana tablet, but I'm curious, because we haven't actually spent a lot of time in the Undergarden. I don't know uh, if one can come from the Undergarden. I do know that Nature's Aura um, caches can come from Adam, uh, from the Pyramids. So i tell you what. I'm going to pop into the Undergarden, and if we can't get it, we'll have to wait a little bit on the Corporeal Requesting Halo, which it is really powerful, so, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, it's kind of limited to some degree <laughs> as, as far as how fast we can get it, but I'm going to poke my head down here and just run around for a minute because we actually didn't spend a whole lot of time in here, and I mean, there was a lot of other like mana-y type things and Batania based things in this dungeon and so I just want to kind of have a look around and see if we can find uh maybe unbreaking four if see if we can find maybe a mana tablet you know because I'm getting mana diamonds out of here and these these are a bit lighter in the pack we're going to actually be using the fact that we have mana diamonds because we've got a few already uh, we're going to be using the fact that we already have quite a few of those uh, to our advantage, but give me a minute. Quest complete undergarden music. Anyways, I'm going to run around for just a minute, see if maybe, maybe Mana Tablet comes from this. Okay, luck is on our side. It didn't take a whole lot of time, and we have a band of mana here that's halfway filled. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, let me go ahead, since there is a few more chests, I don't know if Mana Tablets can come from this. Probably, I'm willing to bet, probably not. I think it's probably the band of mana that comes from this, and then it's the the aura cache for nature's aura from Adam. It does mean that uh, since we can't do mir mana mirrors and stuff at the moment, uh, it does mean that our mana is going to be somewhat limited. Uh, so you know I'll have to I'll have to refill it from time to time, but that's okay. And then let's go ahead and just pop out to spawn at this point. That is awesome. I was kind of like, uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off or not. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have it, but that's great. That is great. And I know a lot of this stuff has places that it can go. Not all of it. Oh, and one other slight hiccup. Not a big deal, uh, but the quantization device. We can craft pretty much all of this except for the source relay warpers. I was thinking I could make all the source relays, so I didn't bother looking at it. My bad. <laughs> it does require warp dust and... To get our warp stones, we're going to need a tier 3 blood altar. The nice thing is, tier 3 blood altar is super, super easy. It's the higher tiers and the blood orbs that are more of a concern, but we don't actually have to have any of that. Now, that being said, we're not actually going to push to tier 3 or to tier 2 
until we have it set up for automation to where we don't have to manually craft the slates because that's just not any fun because um, it's a little bit of a process but we will be automating those uh, here fairly soon then we'll push on to tier three and get the quantization device which is really going to be what pushes corporeal requesting halo over the edge and makes it really awesome but that's okay but we're going to get a couple things we're going to be making we're going to set up mana production now technically we can use this and a mana pool and i'll show you how real quick uh, we're going to need some living rock and living rock is sunstone which is firmament which is prismarine shiverstone okay i would need 12 prismarine yeah i can do this i'll have like just enough to kind of get by here we'll be setting up some uh, some automation soon enough to get those actually that's like i said we're going to be doing a lot of automation type setups over the coming episodes just to make uh, this is a great time for us to basically automate heavy to make the rest of the pack uh, a bit easier for us so it's not so repetitive for us when it comes to crafting things okay we got our six firmament and then let's pop over and steal our natural altar real quick and we're going to be setting this up in the overworld so that we can turn this firmament into the blocks that we need now we don't have any aura generation but you can do some light crafting oh come on get out of here I like never sleep on here, so I've got a lot of phantom membrane for sure. I'm still waiting to get that trinket where phantoms don't bother you. I see other people getting it all the time, but I don't, I still have yet to get it. So I did get coffee bean though uh, the other day because we can use that to uh, basically so we never get like uh, mining fatigue and nausea and stuff like that. So all right, we're gonna go ahead and make our very first living rock there we go all right so we can make our very first mana pool so there's that uh, and now technically at this point uh, what we can do we're not we're gonna set up actual mana production uh, but what we can do is we can use black lotuses uh, since we are getting those from the undergarden now technically normally are these default by the way they are usually they're not changed but let's go ahead and get our living wood twigs we're going to get our wand of the forest and we'll have our first mana setup be kind of over here it this is very subject to change you know as things come together but we're going to make sure it's set to this setting which so i guess technically well we would need it here in a second anyways and then we're going to toss that in and basically just let it put just a drop of mana in there uh, and then we can take our blacker lotuses because it does require there be a little bit of mana before it'll eat a lotus uh, so we can do that with our band of mana and then we can just you know change this back over and toss that in so technically i mean you can you can do this without a mana setup because you get so many black lotuses uh, from the under garden but i'd still like to have i'd like to be responsible and have a little mana set up so oh and you know what i actually messed up a little bit I'll have to get more prismarine. I should have saved one of those sunstones, but uh, yeah, we can do this here. So corundum clusters, those are insanely expensive <laughs> for right now. But luckily, we have corundum blocks. Uh, we got these from Adam. They are mildly uncommon. Right here, we got white corundum, and what we can do. Uh, that's why I grabbed that, because I was wondering if that may come up. I grabbed these on site. Uh, we do have 18. Now, I'm not for sure if maybe we could grow them in here, and this would count as being underground. Uh, probably no, but we're going to try it. We're going to set a few of these down up here, and we'll see what happens. And then we'll set the rest up. I don't think they're going to grow there, though. Because they should have to be pretty deep down. Uh, I'm going to pop over to my mine, though. This would be a great place, probably. This should be a sufficient place. We don't have to go this deep. But I'm going to go ahead and come down a little ways like this. 
And this will be kind of temporary. We will have a better place to grow it. I'm just, it's one of those things I'm not for sure where I'm going to want it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do corundum, corundum, corundum. And we'll have to give this a little bit of time. I am going to chunk load it, uh, at least for now. So we'll give that a bit of time. And we'll come back and check on those in a little bit. And then we will need some glimmering living wood, which is easy enough. Uh, that is living wood and not living wood planks. We will need some of our infused sun metal that we got. And then we're going to need sparks. So these are just six of any petal. Uh, we are going to need some blaze quartz, which is just that. And we're going to need some nebu drops. All right, so there's our blaze quartz. And I'm going to be going with four crafts because why not? Because I'm sure we're going to end up needing them. And we're going to go ahead and be making two spreaders as well, so... So there we go. There is our sparks. Now at this point we've got everything except for the crystal glass, uh, which is going to be induction smelter, strange sand, ghostly glass, and corundum clusters. So depending if our corundum is uh, done or not... Oh, it is. Okay, great. It is very much done. Now this does deal damage. No, it doesn't. I'm thinking of a different crystal. No. That's not what I'm meaning to do. I need... Uh, I'll have to set my break to... If I want to use the break spell. I need sensitive. Don't need sensitive. Uh, it will not target the corundum clusters. So I'll just have to break these off. That's fine. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of point in crafting this. The Corundum actually does spawn underground, too. Uh, sometimes you'll come across it. So this recipe right here is super, super expensive. I'm not sure why we would ever want to do this recipe. It does do 100 rolls, though. So I guess, really, you could make a literal ton. Well, still, though, it's only a 2% chance, though. So, probably not going to make a lot, but we're just going to make it that way. It's a whole lot easier to do it that way. Yeah, you can see those, they're not doing anything. Uh, I really don't think these are going to work. We'll just go ahead and pull those up. Um, but then let's go ahead, let's throw in our Strange Sand, Ghost of Glass, and Corundum Clusters. And we're going to be able to run this now and get ourselves our Crystal Glass. And this is going to make two uh, per craft when ran this way. And then we'll just go ahead and there's 16 crystal glass pines. Uh, okay, now let's pop over. Zoop, zoop. Can I make a spreader in this? We sure can. Perfect. I didn't know if it had enough starlight and stuff because it's only at Y86, but... That's fine. There we go. There is our spreaders. Put that stuff back. Uh, and then the last thing we are going to need, it's going to take a little bit of a little bit of stuff, but we need to get ourselves a flower. And the first flower in this pack is Gormialis. Actually, we're going to hold out on the Gormialis. It's not actually that bad, because uh, all we'd have to do is do a Masticator, uh, which we can actually pull this off without too much effort. But... Uh, I think I am going to hold out on that, and that's because we're getting on in the episode. Uh, not to mention, if we did that, we'd be pushing basically through all of the Tier 2 progression for Magic for Batania. So, uh, we're going to hold off on, on that for just a little bit. But, uh, I am going to pop out, because I need a little bit more Prismarine, because I need a little bit more Firmament, because I accidentally used too much. Here we go. We have an Underwater Temple. We're just going to rob this temple, and that'll give us plenty of farmament for our needs, for a bit anyways. And I'm going to go ahead and get three sunstone at the moment. And two of this I'm going to convert to living rock. This is just for next episode. Uh, and I'm going to keep this other piece of sunstone, and this will probably get moved, but for right now, we're going to put... One of these sunstones down because it's actually used for mana infusion. Uh, we're going to put it down underneath this mana pool. Now, in order for us to make mana steel, 
Uh, it just requires that we get frost steel ingots. And we've got five nuggets. But that's not going to be enough. Uh, so let's go ahead and go get ourselves some shiver stone real fast. Or some uh, frost steel. Here we go. Didn't take that long. Uh, let's go ahead. Break off some of that. This is where uh, ours, ours really gets to shine because we can mine things from the, the ceiling there. And we can do this through the millstone. We can actually get cobalt from this. Okay, and that's actually enough. Let's go ahead. We did get a piece of cobalt here. I think these cost a bit of mana. Uh, not too bad. We're going to go ahead and just convert all of that. And we're going to convert our glass into mana glass. And then to get our Mana Seer Monocle, it's just going to be Gold Nuggets. So there is our Mana Seer Monocle. And what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be applying it to our Questing Halo as an upgrade. So if you hold Shift, you can see Modules None. Now on this one, we're going to have the HUD module. So I definitely want that. And then we're not going to do Auto Update at the moment um, because it's a little bit expensive on man. Like it adds up, especially if you leave it open for too long. Um, quantum receiver, of course we can't do that right now, but search and sorting, uh, we're going to want, um, let's see, I'm trying to do these from memory because you can't look them up in the book until you get the Alfheim portal. So I've kind of just got to do this from memory. Actually, uh, one is master corporea. So let's go ahead and make a master corporea spark and that's going to be sorting. Uh, which sorting is going to put things on the... It's going to basically sort things based on how many items there are. So stuff that has more is going to be closer to the top, you know. Uh, just like that normal auto sort feature. Uh, and HUD is going to actually allow us to see the names of things. It's really the most important. Uh, I'd also like to have search, which is a spectator, I want to say. And let's go ahead and get the spectator... Is this right? I think it is. Yeah. Uh, that's going to give us the search mode for this. Okay, so now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to throw on our ring. Which is going to give us mana. And then we can open this up and you can see all of our different items. And we don't have to be next to that, by the way. Um, and you can also set up... Um, uh, we can set up our open, close, requesting halo and our requesting halo toggle search buttons. Um, and this way we can just, we don't even have to have it on our hands. We can just click our button and that'll allow us to open it up and kind of just go through things. And basically we can sit here and we can just spin around and see everything that's in our system until we reach the very end. And then we can also do our search button so I could type in like, you know, zombie. And it's going to show me everything that's zombies. Um, and then I can release that and have access to this stuff. Now, right now, I can't actually request out of this until we get the uh, until we get the quantum device. But that's okay. Uh, what I can do, that's why we wanted the, the Mana Seer Monocle. Because I can hold Alt. And you can see information about these items. Uh, and this allows me to basically just check and say, okay, I've got... 54 ectoplasm so and then I could say 54 ectoplasm and there we go now you'll notice that this doesn't automatically update what we can do is we can hit U, and there we go you can see that ectoplasm is no longer in this list because we have none in the system you do have to update if you add I think it's a hovering hourglass it will automatically update like every uh, every second or so I think it is um, so that is an option but uh, I'm going to wait because every time that it updates, it does consume just a small amount of mana. Uh, now you'll notice, I mean, it barely scratched our mana bar. It's not much. You know, having this open or updating and things. Uh, but it does add up and I can just update on my own. Now it's also worth noting that if we did say, let's order 32 canvas. Uh, so we know that there's not 512 in there. You can see that this number changed down to 480. And then if I was to order 32 more canvas... It's updated again. So anytime you close it out, it is going to update on its own. So uh, having the automatic updater, we can wait until mana is a little bit in a little bit better position than it is right now uh, to add the auto updater, you know. 
but with the corporea index and um, the interactive corporea menu it's going to make it a whole lot easier for us and then like i said later on once we get the quantum device we'll just be able to click like that uh, and we'll be able to pull things out and they'll automatically get sent to us at the cost of mana so um, but that's something that uh that's something that we'll get a little bit later down the road. We have to get uh, the tier three blood altar, which like I said, it's not going to be a big deal for us, but uh, it is something that we'll have to push on to before too terribly long. We could do it right now and we could make the Gormialis right now, but it's a little bit of a progression push and I just want to mostly focus on some setups and stuff over the coming episodes. You know, spend a little bit of time making our lives a little bit easier as we move forward. Uh, and then we'll push on a bit. Anyways, uh, with that, we're going to end out this episode here. Next episode, we're going to be doing a couple big systems uh, that are really going to help us out a literal ton. A literal ton. Uh, one of them is automatic ores. Having that just completely automated at long last. And then the other one is a secret. But it's extremely, it's going to be so, so beneficial to us at this point. Like, so, so beneficial. So, anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. And before I forget, just a really, really quick note. This is a curio, so you can, you can slot it in and your hotkey will work. So you can have it in your inventory or as a curio. So... Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys next time.